Ready to be funny again? No! Klaus. We're doing it again. <laughs> uh. How old were you when Eddie Murphy was good? S <laughs> Six? <laughs> Uh, I was about that, maybe older. I'm, I'm, I don't know how much. How I don't even know I mean, how old you are. I'm you're, you're, 36 years old. So you are I was born in '83. You're significantly younger than I. Yeah, so like, you were born yeah. when Eddie Murphy was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, like roughly mm -hmm. when he first kind of hit big and was Gumby, damn it, and uh, Mr. Uh, Robinson's Neighborhood and all that stuff. Yeah, Eddie Murphy was like the biggest shit ever. Like he was, he was the thing. And uh, and so he started doing movies, and he was in he was in Beverly Hills Cop. That's right. I didn't screw up the name of that <laughs> before. Uh, Axl Rose from Brooklyn Cop. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> he was in Beverly Hills Cop and Beverly Hills Cop Two, the the very good sequel. Uh, I'm not going to tell that story about my high school. <laughs> this is Roll hard. it. Uh, did you ever see The Golden Child? Actually, I, I didn't. No? no? So in The Golden no. Child, he goes to Tibet to find like Buddha or some shit, like a kid who's going to be the next Buddha. I don't even know. Uh, but it's a funny movie. I, I haven't seen it in like probably 35 years, but I remember it being funny. Then there was Coming to America. Yeah, that's a good one. That one, I've seen. Uh, Coming to America, he played everybody. He was like, he was the barber. He was the, uh, he was one of the, uh, uh, no, it was he and Arsenio Hall were in that movie. Yeah. And they played everybody. Like, Arsenio Hall did this awesome uh, uh, soul singer guy mm -hmm. uh, where he sang, uh, I believe the children are the future. Uh, but anyway, so Eddie Murphy was the business. And then somehow, like, the 90s hit. And uh, he went from the guy who was like, my girl wants to party all the time, uh, to like... To, to be in, you know, to be in, in kids' movies. Kids' movies, yeah. Uh, Norbit. No, you move that I can tell, because look, when I inhale, my titty make the horn honk. Listen. <laughs> See that? Wait, was Norbit a kids' movie? No. No, that no. one was, that was just a... That was just a real dumb movie. Real dumb movie where he played a real dumb guy. Yeah. Um, uh, that that a huge hit on VHS. Eddie Murphy kind of became a joke so much uh, so that you know David Spade made that uh, um, that kind of infamous dig. Look, children, it's a falling star. Make a wish. <laughs> yeah. Little thing oh, between, man. between to, he and SNL during during that time period, boy. David Spade and Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Dozens were, of people cared. They were beefing. Yeah, Donkey got pissed off. <laughs> I, I like waffles. Ah! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Still got it. Can you do the Eddie Murphy laugh? I don't think I can. Not sure. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Take two. I still got it. It's a nightmare. Made some fucking bank playing that oh, donkey, that, right? Sure. Had to have. Uh, but but uh, reputation-wise and like, you know, what whatever, his like reputation kind of went... <laughs> like he wasn't that fucking hip-ass wearing the jump, leather jumpsuit and talking about all sorts of naughty shit. And this might be. Mm, I'm going to cut that one out. I was going to say, didn't he get caught with like a fucking... Hooker, like, like, a, <laughs> I don't know, I'm something, not cutting I don't know. This out. yeah, yeah, I don't know. And so, flash forward to like this year, and Eddie Mur Murphy is apparently trying to mount a rather large comeback via Netflix. And sometimes, y'all, you love him and I love him. Put your hands together. Dolomite is my name. Biopic, and a biopic about like a semi obscure 70s black exploitation star uh kind of comedy musician uh rudy ray moore uh who starred in an ass load of like dolomite movies and like dolomite shows and he was 
not not shows. He wasn't on TV talking about fucking fucking elephants. And yeah, fucking <laughs> everything. But like, I'm talking like tours. He'd go on tours and play in little clubs around the country back in the '70s, and and uh, you know he was in kind of an underground circuit cult hit, right? It's true. Yeah, uh, as I as I feel as though I've almost said before. You mentioned the room before. The actual Dolomite movie feels a lot like the room. Starring Tommy Wiseau. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. Rudy Ray Moore is kind of a Tommy Wiseau figure, but uh, play what I play. Say I said a thing before. It was very well put. Show show me from that angle. I agree. <laughs> mm, yeah. The 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 similarities to. Uh, the movie, um, uh, the Disaster Artist, mm -hmm. are are kind of striking at certain points. Once we get into uh, Rudy Ray Moore going from struggling nightclub artist to discovering his character of Dolomite or creating it and working out the character, stealing it from a homeless person in the record store. <sighs> there was that, um, but never touched on again. Never touched on again. But once it once it gets to the point of. Uh, of, of him creating the movie and, and, and getting all his buddies together to make this movie, uh, it really, the similarities to Disaster Artist are, are pretty, pretty close. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but Rudy Ray Moore, as portrayed by Eddie Murphy, has a lot more charisma and, uh, and a lot more enthusiasm than like Tommy Wiseau is, where Tommy Wiseau has got like this very narrow, seems like, determination. Yeah, no, Eddie Murphy portrays him, there, there's a lot of just that uh, Eddie Murphy charm. Yeah, and, and it's it's very appealing. You really, as kind of delusional as his character definitely seems, yep. um, you do find yourself rooting for him more than you would Tommy Wiseau, who just seems like a completely out of touch maniac. Yeah. This reminded me of the Eddie Murphy that I loved as a kid. You mm -hmm. know, this was the Eddie Murphy that I always, like just the 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 coming to America Eddie Murphy, the the uh, the Beverly Hills cop Eddie Murphy. Um, the one who is just like, "Hey, he's got that thing, right? Yeah. Every time he looks at the camera, he's like, "Hey, I'm Eddie Murphy, right?" You get a lot of that Eddie Murphy smile. It's like, "Come on." Yeah, exactly. So I, I love the movie. I thought it was super enjoyable. Um, there were, there were like, it's not a perfect movie. Someone very smart once uh, commented about how uh, uh, Keegan-Michael Keyes uh, feels like a caricature. He feels like a weird character from an SNL sketch or, yeah. you know, Key and Peele sketch, yeah. I guess. Because there was the same thing in um, uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I did not see that. Uh, Michael Myers is in it, playing a character who never existed in real life, but he's like uh, their first like producer, record producer guy, and 100% A looks like he's wearing a like SNL costume, mm -hmm. and B does not seem like an actual real human being whatsoever. Feels like a comedy sketch character, yeah, and weirdly out of place. Well, that's the kind of song teenagers can crank up the volume in their car and bang their heads to. Bohemian Rhapsody will never be that song. I think uh, Keegan Michael Key's character is more realistic, yeah. but he's weirdly inconsistent with being like, you know, I'm serious. I write serious things, you know. I'm trying to, you know, uh, really elevate the art. And then at other times being like, yeah, yeah, ninja kung fu things. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, and then, exactly. Whoa, what are you? It's yeah, like, at one moment he's like at odds with, with Rudy Ray Moore. And then the next moment he's like in on the joke. There, there are weird inconsistencies like, uh, you know, uh, Wesley Snipes character, <laughs> whose name I've never gotten wrong or mixed up with anyone else. No. Denzel. He's a... Really? What? Did I... What? Did I do... Did I... Did I do a racism? No! The Rudy is talking with these people that he owes money to because their production is out of cash and he's yeah. trying to convince them. And it's a fairly serious moment. And then down the street around the corner is Wesley Snipes' character who plays the director of uh, the Dolomite film. And, and kind of a pretentious, yeah. you know, like, I'm a very... Yeah, he's like a pretentious alcoholic drug addict. Yeah, yeah. 
artist. Right. But he's like back there with like a bottle of booze and overhearing and he's like, oh, and it's like, there's the weird like 70s zoom where you just, bounk, 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 But uh, there's yeah. small problems. It's still small it's problems. a fun movie. It's a fun movie. Uh, Eddie Murphy's great in it. Uh, Eddie Murphy's apparently recording a, a taping a new stand-up special for Netflix, uh, where he's trying to return to his kind of uh, uh, delirious and raw roots without maybe you know the weird sexism and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I, I'm excited to have Eddie Murphy back. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, and you know, maybe hopefully this is hopefully he's got some other shit lined up uh, that isn't about donkeys or Norbit or fucking Dr. Doolittle or whatever, but I thought it was a great movie. It's on Netflix right now, uh, and everybody's got Netflix, right? It, it's just it's just how it is. So Watch it. Watch it. Watch the movie. Go watch it. Do it. Go watch the movie. All right. Go watch the movie. <laughs> this is how we end. We're like... Watch the movie. <laughs> this, you just... Pure. Watch the movie! Remember how much? <laughs> Come on, that's not cool. Neither is Shenmue. Ugh. Shenmue isn't cool. Mm. Shenmue's a bad game. Shenmue One and Two came out what last year? Uh, the the re-release for uh, so, you love it. So your history with Shenmue goes a whole week deep. Yeah, because uh, I made Klaus sit and watch me play uh, the original Shenmue that involved a lot of. Uh, Involved a lot of waiting. Klaus. Klaus. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> That's not a good game. Nah, yeah. That's a bad game. But I'm telling you, man, back in the year 2000, 2001, whenever no, that was. I would never. I never would have had the patience for so that. while i waited for uh for the shop to open or whatever i would just crack open the official dreamcast magazine and uh, kick back read the article about the previews for shenmu 2 and uh wait oh oh the shop's open i can go in and get my clue to where to go next tomorrow yeah to that's the other thing <laughs> it's like ah wait uh, wait you know, six in-game hours, which would be the equivalent of 24 minutes. It's about mm. four minutes per in-game hour. Yeah. yeah. And you'd wait all that time, and you'd walk into a building, and you'd talk to someone for two minutes. And then it'd be like, all right, we'll come back tomorrow mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. And it's like, that's forever. Yeah. So I decided to replay uh, Shenmue 1 and 2 over again because I love myself uh, and uh, in preparation for something that has been in the making 18 years Shenmue 3 do I get to hit it? I won't hit it but I hate it mm, there it is it's here it's here is it, is it, it's not even opened no I haven't even opened it yet we're just talking about it. it's here I don't you know. have <laughs> I can't bring myself to fucking play it, honestly. I mean, it's gonna be garbage. It's gonna be garbage. So I backed it on Kickstarter after uh, the E3 of Magic and Dreams or whatever they call it. Remember, like Sony announced they did they 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 showed uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, uh, Last Guardian, and Shenmue Three. Three pieces of garbage right there. <laughs> really, Shenmue it's, garbage. Yeah. Last Guardian, boy, I want I I want to love I it because to love you know it. what. Shadow of the Colossus, yeah. top five favorite games. I and love Eco, it so much. I love Eco too. Yeah, Eco's good uh, too. Last and Guardian, I did not care for. Yeah, it's uh, it was, it's the weakest of the three, um, I think. And uh, Final Fantasy VII is a shit game for stupid people. <laughs> That's bold. We're coming out fighting. Coming out I guns the, blazing. I want the internet to hate yeah, me. Yeah, 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 it's working. Oh yeah, they'll remake it, it'll be more fun. The plot will still be kind of nonsense, but frankly, 
aren't all JRPGs. I mean, Kingdom Hearts has taken nonsense to such an extreme. Mm. I feel like uh, Final Fantasy VII, going back to that plot, is going to feel like a real breath of fresh air. Yeah. I imported the uh, Shenmue 2 uh, just so I could play it uh, on the Dreamcast. That's how much I love these games. I say this as a f- like a fan. My rose-tinted glasses crushed <laughs> the moment I started playing God. these games. These games are objectively shit games. Anyway, Shenmue 3. I'm sure everybody loves it. I'm going to play through it. Uh, I'm sure all you diehard Shenmue fans are just like, oh no, the pacing, that's what's great about these games. You're fooling yourself. 1.2 out of 10. That's my score. <laughs> I haven't played it. Never will.